What's going on, you guys? Thanks for tuning in for another episode of JV Trickle RC. Um, this is first of two videos I got coming up. These are going to be kind of short and sweet, um, but uh, I mentioned it in one of my previous videos. I had some requests to do a uh, shot building, a uh, shot building tutorial, and that's what, what we're going to be doing in this video. And uh, again, let me stress, okay? Um, this is my method. This is my way of doing it. I'm not telling you this is the only way to do it. I've seen guys have their own little techniques and tricks and tips and and that's fine um, but again this is for um, some of the newer racers and uh, uh, people that may not have done as much of their own RC work in the past they're trying to do more of their own work this is to help you know that kind of people out that's requested this video so and one reason I want to say that again that this is my method is I know you know there's gonna be someone out there that's gonna be like I'm smart you're dumb I'm big you're little I'm right you're wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and hey, that's cool. Like I said, everybody's got their own way of doing it, um, but uh, this is to help out the, the newer racers and people that have requested to see this. Um, in this video, I'm gonna show you um, a couple different methods. Then I'm gonna show you some things that if you build the shock and it reacts a certain way, I'm gonna show you in the video, um, it's bad. Uh, you'll need to redo it. So I'm gonna show you some do's and don'ts basically with this video. Um, but again, guys, I uh, appreciate each and every single one of you. And uh, with all that said, let's get right to it. All right, so uh, one of the first things we're going to do is go ahead and clean these up. These are race use shocks. Um, so I thought I'd give you a quick rundown on uh, one of my quick cleaning methods as well. Um, obviously, if you're building a brand new set of shocks, you don't have to worry about this. Um, however, you may still need to deburr some of the components like the actual piston or... Um, uh, some of the other internal pieces, end caps, things of that nature. Basically anything that is going to be coming from like an injection molded plastic or something like that. But uh, you can see that these are pretty dirty, uh, so we're going to get them cleaned up. And uh, my cleanup process is uh, uh, pretty simple, um, but we'll get to that in a second. But I'm going to check it there and just, you know, see. And this, if I remember correctly, too, this particular shock, it wasn't really dead. Um, I was rebuilding these for the sake of the video and uh, cleaning up my car. Um, in the process, getting ready for a race whenever I decide to film this video. But uh, my cleaning process here is uh, just a little bit of simple green. I always keep a spare, a couple spare toothbrushes in my tool bag. And I'm going to clean out the threads, clean the shaft, all that kind of stuff, get all the dirt off of it. And uh, that actually helps prolong the life of the little O-ring you're going to see in that shock collar or a shock nut, whatever you want to call it. So uh, at this point here, uh, we're going to be pretty much ready um, to uh, take them apart. I'm uh, going to go ahead and clean this one up and set it to the side. Like I said, I'm actually showing you two methods. Uh, this is method one, and then uh, I'm also going to show you some um, uh, what a successful shock build will look like and what a shock build fail <laughs> will look like. Uh, if uh, I'm going to have a couple of those in here too, just so you know, like if your shock does this after you fill it with shock oil and put it back together, you know, you need, re you need to redo it kind of thing. So I got one of them put down, got them both cleaned up. So this one here, we're going to go ahead and empty out the, uh, the shock oil. And again, you can see it's really not dirty, um, but uh, we're going to get everything cleaned out anyway. And uh, for the sake of the video, uh, none, of, none of these shocks really needed to be rebuilt. Uh, but I uh, was cleaning my car and wanted to film the video. So uh, we're going to make sure we get all the shock oil out, you know, the best we can. Sometimes if it's a little dirty, I'll spray some cleaner in there or, or I will pull the little... Uh, ball cap or end cap off, slide the piston out, clean it out thoroughly. Uh, not going to do it in this video, but like I said, none of these are really that dirty. Um, so, uh, also, too, I just want to show you this is what the shock cap for this particular uh, shock build looks like. And I'm going to pull that little um, diaphragm uh, or cap, seal, or whatever you want to call it out. You can see the cap, that little diaphragm and seal set to the side. Again, this is method one. You'll understand what I mean by that whenever we go over method two. So uh, now that one actually was a little bit more dirty, but that wasn't actually the um, uh, uh, from anything that was actually gotten shock. That was due to a, a little additional rubber piece I put in the shock for it, and that, that's what that was coming off of, a limiter. But anyway, so we're going to get our shock oil in, and then this that cap there still has that... Uh, that uh, rubber seal or diaphragm um, in it. And you're gonna see, I'm not gonna take my time. The shaft and the pistons pulled all the way out and look, oh man, it will not compress. Because I put together, yep, epic fail, that's bad. So you're gonna have to redo it. 
We put it together too fast. The shock piston was elongated. There was too much air, too much shock oil, too much something in there not letting it compress properly. So we're going to do it again, and I'm going to run that piston up and down. We're going to try to get all the little air bubbles out. And a lot of, uh, some places too, whenever you read or, or watch videos building shocks, they say don't fill the shock oil to the actual end. You can or you don't have to, um, but you want to get it close. And uh, I'll get into more on that a little bit later. So now we're going to go ahead and actually compress that shock piston up slowly. Okay. And the cap's just sitting on there at this point. And it's going to push just a little bit of oil out, and that's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly start threading it on. And then I may back it up to make sure I catch the thread properly. But I'm going to slowly start threading that back on. And as you're doing that, you're looking for like little air bubbles to come out around the, uh, the seal there. You're going to see a little bit more shock oil probably coming out too. And that's okay because um, it's kind of pushing that last little bit out from underneath that diaphragm. So uh, we're going to keep working on that. And then we're going to tighten it up. Take your time with it. And then, all right, so we're going to check it. So now look, I'm pushing it in, and the shock's, that's a lot better. You can push the shock in, but it's coming out a little faster than I would want to. So I want to call that an epic fail, too. In all honesty and reality, that would probably have been okay, um, especially if you were trying to be, like, in a hurry for a race or something. Um, but uh, I didn't like it. It was coming out a little too fast and extending all the way. Um, a shock's job is to dampen, okay? The spring is what's going to actually help the return uh, to your uh, ride height setting. The spring is what's going to actually bring it back at said speed and so on and so forth. The shock oil and the shock itself is just meant to dampen. So we, uh, we got the air bubbles out again. We topped it off with some more oil. And we're going to do the same method as before. We got that little piston compressed and pushed up again. Um, you're not, and you're, you're, whenever you do that, you're sliding it up slowly. You're not like forcing a lot of shock oil out because that piston's going to have some holes in it. So you're running up slow, letting some shock oil get below the piston and things like that. So now I'm just going to work it gently. I'm going to check it here and there, going kind of slow, checking, letting some oil and a little air bubbles, um, any remaining air bubbles kind of come out around the seal. So we're going to keep doing that. And uh, we got just a few more things to do on that. So now we're going to tighten that. Now let's try this one out. Okay, so I'm going to push it in. And you see how that's a lot slower? Whenever it rebounds, it's a lot slower, and then it stops. Then I have to pull it to full um, ride height, right, or, or full uh, shock length, I should say. So uh, I'm feeling good about this shock, so we're going to probably go ahead. Yeah, so a very slow rebound, and then it doesn't go all the way. So that, st that right there is what I would call a successful shock. Length. I like mine to be have less rebound than that, but that's okay. Uh, that, that is one that I would consider successful. Okay, so now we're going to shock building method number two. Now on this one, um, we're, this is where we're going to actually use that little bladder or a diaphragm or whatever you want to call it uh, right there. And then what we're going to do is it's not in the cap this time. This is my second method. So this is where I'm going to take that little, uh, yep, take that little diaphragm there or bladder. And I'm going to go ahead and seat it on top. I'm going to push it down in one corner. Then I'm going to kind of push it in like that and then kind of seat it. And what I'm doing is, is by doing that is I'm pushing out that excessive, excuse me, <laughs> shock oil from the side, the, 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 the extra amount. So it's kind of seated. And I may have to go back and clean that up a little bit and do it again. But I'm slowly bringing that piston up again, and I'm going to reseat it, get a little bit more of that uh, shock oil um, out of the top there around that diaphragm. So now, same thing as before. We got the shock piston uh, compressed. And then we're going to slowly thread that body down. You're going to be looking for any additional um, oil coming out past the seal that's got some air bubbles or just a little bit of uh, additional oil that may come out. But now that one's done, look, I'm going to compress it and it stays. The shock is smooth. It's not hard. You know, it's not hard. It's not, it's not trying to hold on to it. That is what I call like a perfect shock build, in my opinion. That's the way I prefer to have mine come out. Because, again, the shock's job is to dampen. It is the spring's job and the spring rate, to, which actually does your rebound rate, which would extend your shock back. So now at that point, everything's good on that, and uh, now I can run those, um, those uh, threaded collars back up, and we can reassemble the shocks. So um, those are my two methods. 
Um, I've used these methods for years, and like I said in my intro and in, in the clip, you know, there's somebody about there like, you're not doing it right or something and so on and, 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 and whatever. Listen, that's fine. That There's multiple ways of doing it. This is my way of doing it and uh, just trying to help out some newer racers, uh, young racers, anybody that's wanting to, to you know, learn how to do um, more of their own RC work and maintenance because, um, you know, your shocks, uh, your shocks and your spring combos, that is um, – some of your most important features of your RC race car. That's what your setup's based on, your ride heights, your cross weights, your, you know, everything. So um, this is a very critical part of your RC race car. Um, and, you know, even if you're a basher, just a yard basher, and, you know, you blow a shock out and you need to put one back together, you need, how, you need to know how to do it properly. You know, you don't want any issues or anything like that um, hampering you from doing so. But uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Well, guys, that pretty much sums it up for the shop building uh, tutorial. Um, I hope uh, that this video was able to help somebody. Um, like I said, I've had a few uh, uh, requests to do this video, shop building, and a couple others that's coming to the channel soon, too. So, uh, and uh, like I talked about before, I have done these in the past, but they were kind of within other episodes, like some of my builds and things that I've done. So, I wanted to do some specific videos, just make it easier for people to, to pinpoint, pick it up find it and things like that so uh but again i hope somebody found this helpful i mean if somebody was to leave me just one comment saying hey jb this helped that's that's a win in my book so again this is for you guys trying to help out some of the newer racers people just getting into it things of that nature but all that said as always guys i really do i greatly appreciate each and every single one of you and i'll catch you guys next time